Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this narration of the web novel All is Fair in War, taken from Reddit with the approval of the author. There should be a playlist in the description for all the episodes, and I hope that you all enjoy. Part 1 If you were to ask most people on what they would see if they went to the fairies' capital world, most would lament that they could not afford to go there for the price of visiting was more than an unfairy could ever hope to afford in their lifetimes, or their children's children's lifetimes. While some people were discontent with being ruled by the fair superiors, most were apathetic to being under the fairy's boot. After all, what could they possibly hope to do about it, given their mastery of magic? The same magic that allowed them to live in incomparable luxury, at least when compared to other races. And so... Life went on, and most races powerless to stop the fairy advance. It mattered not which race opposed them, as they would be chewed up by the gears of the fairy war machine and spat out as their newest subjects. Mason, do you have a minute? queried Professor Dembe. A slightly concerned look displayed on his face. Bruh! Then I missed something in my coursework. I'm sure I double-checked everything. So, what could be wrong? Mason gulped slightly before replying, hoping that all was well. Of, of course, I have a minute. Uh, what is the issue? Well, I looked over the data you gathered from the worlds that you've recently observed, and something seems to be amiss. Oh, crap, what did I fuck up now? Could you specify what the problem is, Professor? I'll get to fixing it immediately, replied Mason, with as much confidence as he could muster. The Aether scope readings for the worlds that you have observed recently are quite strange, to tell the truth. Are you sure you've calibrated it correctly? I would hate for all your work to be rendered irrelevant by an uncalibrated scope. Oh, so that's about that. I knew that I should have clarified the readings on the first page, yet I left it for the footnotes. Either way, it's easily explained. Professor, the worlds that I've recently observed are from a newly discovered plane, where the available aether is minimal. Yet regardless of this, the dominant species of this world have managed to create a civilization. The lights from the surface that are visible at night are evidence of that. The only reasonable explanation that I can think of is that they've managed to find a way to run on a tiny drops of aether available, which speaks of an extraordinary efficiency. Hmm. <laughs> Extremely efficient with aether, yet they only have a minimal amount of it available, meaning that they won't be able to put up too much of resistance to our forces, said the professor, who turned to look at Mason before giving him a hearty smile. Congratulations, Mason. If we verify these readings, this has the potential to be the discovery of the century. Sponsoring you may have been the best decision the Council of Acquisition have made for a long, long time. Mason smiled in return, feeling good at the recognition that he so sorely wanted. Yes, it's only up from here. I wonder if the Council is going to give me any land from these worlds when they conquer them. Since you've clearly worked so hard, you can take the rest of the week off. That's roughly how long it'll take to verify these results. So until then, relax, the professor, with the joy in his voice being almost infectious. The old man is happier than me. That could only mean good news for me and the department. I'll be sure to relax. Have a good day, professor. You too, Mason, he replied before turning around and leaving. Mason watched as he closed the door behind him and waited until the professor was far away. Yes, I've made it! I'm gonna be a rich man! He exclaimed while leaping about like a bat out of hell. I should tell my family, but uh, I'll wait until the results are verified. I don't want to put the cough before the, the unicorn. Regardless, this calls for celebration. He took the opportunity to pen a letter to his close friends and family, in which he invited them all to a clear spring one of the fanciest restaurants in the capital. Usually, he'd wince at the cost, but today was no day to think about prices. After all, he'd soon be a wealthy man. Mason, did you hear the news about the clear spring? queried Ansa, standing at a gigantic five foot three. Ansa was the honor of being the tallest woman in Mason's family, or any family for that matter. However, it vexed him endlessly that the tallest woman he'd ever knew was also his younger sister. Regardless, her size and strength had its uses, and the only cost to using them was Mason's pride. No, I haven't. Was our reservation cancelled? Answer grimaced before answering, which only served to put Mason on edge. Whatever this is, it can't be good. The clear spring was... Uh... 
Well, I was destroyed. Well, huh? It's believed that the five wings struck the restaurant, destroying it, a fairly powerful explosion. I heard that they were targeting Duke Nukem, who sadly perished in the blast. The cogs in Mason's head started turning. How is it that in the capital, Aether Prime for detonation wasn't detected? What's going on? Answer, do you have any idea how they pulled that off? Some of the people have floated the idea of a traitor in the security force, but since there were multiple sensors that should have detected the Aether used, we're stumped. The security chief has called us all in to bolster security and keep the capital safe. All of the non-fairies within the capital have also been detained for questioning. Really? All of them? Is that necessary, given that Duke Nukem, one of the heads of the Council of Acquisition, has passed away? This is the least we should do. Although with great inconvenience to many of us, since the menial work isn't getting done, now all of the non-fairies present have been detained for now. Guess it's going to be a rough few days, huh? Increased security along with a no non-fairy workforce. Mason sighed while he cupped his head in his hands. This is giving me a headache. It was the day of Mason's presentation to the Council of Acquisition, which was the greatest honor that he'd ever received. Consequently, he was incredibly nervous. But the sight of the silver steps to the Great Hall of Conquest stirring even more uncertainty in him. The Great Hall of Conquest was unique due to being one of the few buildings that were managed by the Council of Culture, the Council of Acquisition, and the Council of Preservation. The magnificent building itself was built and managed by the Council of Preservation. The building, which was created from dragon jade and inlaid with dazzling oracalcum, despite the greatest battles from the millennia past. Although the building had stood for a millennia, there wasn't a single blemish to be seen, due to the incredibly careful maintenance of the Council of Preservation carried out. On the other hand, the Council of Culture took care of many artifacts and treasures displayed within the hall, whether it was an ancient manuscript from the early days of fairy culture, or a venerated king's crown, any artifact that was held in high regard by the fairies was displayed in the hall. Finally, the Council of Acquisition was responsible for doing the actual conquest. What use was their hall of conquest without anyone to do the conquering? Mason took a moment to absorb the sight, as it was only a small amount of fairies that were invited. Get your crap together. If you can pull this off, not only will you be a rich man, you could potentially become a lord of the newly conquered race. If you do this right, you'll be wealthier than even your wildest of dreams. Perhaps Her Majesty might notice me as well. Mason took a deep breath and steeled himself before climbing up the steps, making sure to keep his head up and his posture perfect. First impressions were hugely important, after all. The two guards in the front entrance lifted their spears apart and parted ways, giving Mason access to the interior. The council clearly knows who I am. I wonder how thoroughly they vetted me before inviting me here. At this point, they probably know things about me that I don't know about myself. Mason walked inside, spotting a fairy who wore a purple and blue robe with gold trim. The bespeckled person in front of him smiled gently before raising his hand and approaching him. Mason Renner, correct? There was something unsettling about the man before him, yet Mason made sure to smile and maintain eye contact before replying, Yes, I'm Mason Renner. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to, if you don't mind me asking? That sounded awkward as crap. Keep it together. The man chuckled before replying, No need to be so nervous, Mason. I understand that today is a big day for you, but fried nerves are your enemy. If you want, I have something to help with that. He pulled out a small golden flask and deftly slipped it into Mason's open hand. A single sip should be enough. Mason eyed the flask and wondered what it was, but chastised himself for doing so. Medicine from a council member would most certainly be beneficial. Mason steadied himself and took a sip. He then immediately proceeded to cough and splutter, almost doubling over from the shock of the burning taste. What the feck was that? Why does it taste like fire? Mason almost cursed the man before remembering where he was and who exactly he was talking to. He shut up and stood ramrod straight while bowing his head in apology. Just as he was about to apologize, he heard the man chuckle, which made his curiosity flare up. <laughs> Believe it or not, your reaction was a rather tame one, at least compared to other fairies. Regardless, how do you feel? Have your nerves settled? 
Mason was about to agree to just please the man before him, but he took a moment to jack himself. To his surprise, he no longer felt nervous or apprehensive. Rather, he felt quite boisterous. What did he just give me? Liquid confidence? The man patted Mason on the back, smiling all the while. It's good stuff, isn't it? It most certainly is, replied Mason, the astonishment in his voice clear to hear. Well then, good luck with your presentation. I know you'll do an excellent job. He turned around to see a man walking off towards the hall's exit. Usually, he would have had the decorum to restrain himself, but in this moment, he was overcome with curiosity. I have to know what that liquid was. Excuse me, sir, I need to know what that was. The man looked at him once more, seemingly evaluating something about Mason. There was ten seconds of silence before the man chose to answer. It is a little something I got from a far-off world, so it'll be difficult to find currently. No, I suspect it'll become easier to obtain soon. Well, what is it called? It's called whiskey, my friend. End of chapter. Just a quick shout-out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Dark Machine, Mezic, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astrea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.